All right, good evening. I'd like to call to order this regular town council meeting for Tuesday, May 23rd of 2023. Uh, please rise for a moment of silence. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councillor Allenson? Here. Councillor Carmody? Here. Councillor Fishbein? Councillor Laffin? Here. Councilor Marone? Here. Councilor Tata? Here. Councilor Testa? Councilor Zandri? Here. Chairman Cervoni? Here, thank you. We are gonna do the consent agenda in three parts and that will become apparent the reason why as we do it. So, Mr. Vice Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve, um, yep, yeah, that we approve consent agenda items B through Q. You got a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank I, you. I, I need to abstain from 3N, 3O, and 3Q uh, due to a potential conflict with my employer. Very good. Uh, please note the, extension, the abstention, thank you. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Councilor Zandri with the one no vote. Next. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve or accept consent agenda items A, R through U, W through HH, and II as corrected. Can I get a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, I don't think we have any abstentions on this, this part, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion passes. Now we need 3V. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, I move that we approve or accept item 3V on the consent agenda. Moved. Uh, can I get a second? Seconded by Councillor Marone. Um, and then we have abstentions. Councillor Laffin. Yes, I need to abstain. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Wallingford Community Theater, okay. which is receiving funds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I need to abstain. I'm on the board of directors of the United Way of Meriden in Wallingford, so there's that, and the Church of the Nazarene, which is through the United Way. Yeah. And Councillor Tata, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be abstaining from 3V as well. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I have five aye votes. I have Marone. Testa. I assume it's 3B? V. I heard. V, v, as in Victor. V. Yes. I'm, uh, if it's appropriate, I'll vote yes. Okay. I know what it is. Very good. So I have five I votes. We have Marone, Testa, Zandri, Allenson, and myself, and then the three abstentions. All right. That was fun. Uh, I am going to, oh. Item four, there were no items removed from the consent agenda. On to item five, the public question and answer period. Mr. Gross, I saw your head shake. Bob Gross, Long Hill Road. Question, to, it could be to the council or to the mayor a couple of weeks ago, or to the controller asked about the mediation for Covanta, there was two, approximately $200,000. Where did that money go? Uh, I'll defer to the administration. Oh, look at that. The comptroller yep. has a separate We brought it paper. up before, so yeah. All right, so 218587 was deposited as revenue in the general fund under town recovery legal. I didn't hear the end of it. Town recovery legal was the revenue account it was deposited in. So it just went to the 
went to the general fund because it was just a fund. settlement of them getting out of the contract. And the council approved all that. The council doesn't have to approve where the revenue goes. Okay. So it just came. It was the council aware of it? I'm not sure. Okay. Mayor? The council had to approve the arbitration award, which they did, and the town received the money. Yes, but did they know where it went? There was there? no appropriation of funds, which would require the council. So they, they haven't been spent. They're still there. I mean, it's just 218000 or whatever it was that just went to the general fund. Um, this goes to Councillor Tata and some of the others that were reason why we have these extra funds every year that aren't used, and they could be used to offset some of our taxes. Um, another question is, there was discussion last week of downtown outside dining, and the question is, it's great, you did it, no problem. Why don't you fix downtown? Why don't you clean one of those lots for the businesses downtown? Help them out somehow. I understand Public Works is, you know, they don't have enough staff, haven't had enough staff, but there's a lot of lots downtown that are disgusting, haven't been cleaned in years. And for businesses, to you, Mr. Mayor, then why don't we show some attention to those lots to help? Those are businesses also in town as other places are, but those are more private property. These are our own, some of these are our own lots. The lots have been cleaned in recent years. The, the lines in the lots that have green paint are municipal lots. All of the others are private. I, I, I know one very well, and it hasn't been cleaned in years. On North Orchard Street. It, is green, it has been green lined, but it was green lined a few years ago. It is a town lot. Town owns it. The town has spent considerable effort in seeing that vehicle, uh, yeah, vehicles are moved out of there when they sit there, and it makes it unavailable to the public to use. Well, it just so that, I mean, it does get attention. We're going to have a new mayor, um, whoever it is. Um, hopefully, they would show some attention to those lots. Their businesses, just as uptown as businesses, and um, everybody should be treated fairly in that respect. That's all, because those lots, I'm downtown all the time. I was down there today, and it's, it's not clean at all. Um, on the agenda tonight, there was the ARPA for the 745. So all the ones that are listed there were approved. So they've now moved to the next phase, which is to Attorney Small? That's correct. Okay. And then she goes, through, Attorney Small goes through them and decides whether they qualify or not. No, she, at, no, at this point, she's drafting agreements because each grant requires an agreement. There's terms, conditions, and the recipient has to sign an agreement. Correct, but if they, she had stopped some others from passing, so she still has that option of doing that, is what I'm saying. Potentially. I, okay. I mean, if, if, if something in there is, is in violation of the final rule, then there are. Um, and this is to um, council, whoever. I know there's going to be a new mayor next year. It's going to be great. Um, but this year on there, I saw there was a transfer of money for fireworks. And I would hope that the new mayor would put the budget, put it in the budget. It just looks, and I, and I understand what the person did so forth and wants it for the betterment of the town but the appearance of asking for money from an elected official to businesses in town that do business with the town and or might be higher elected official is already announced it it just doesn't sit well it, it shouldn't be done and that the town should just fund it so those kind of appearances I mean I understand that ethics are an issue I mean, that some people don't fully understand, but that is something where you shouldn't be soliciting money if you're an elected official in the same community for those types of things. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else for public question and answer? There being none, moving on, I am going to skip to item seven and then come back to item six. 
So that's discussion and possible action regarding the food services contract, July 1, 22 to June 30th, 25. I am certain your orthopedic surgeon is not here tonight. Yes. And if, and if she is, please don't. If you could remind us who you are for the record, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Fran Thompson. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Personnel in the Wallingford Public Schools. Good evening, Danielle Blizzy, Superintendent, Wallingford Public Schools. Good evening, Dominic Barone, Business Manager, Public Schools. Thank you. So we have this contract before us. If you could give us the Cliff Notes version. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity to present this to you this evening. Um, we have before you the uh, contract uh, of our food service uh, union. Um, we have 28 members, 10 full-time and 18 part-time. And this is for a three-year contract, uh, effective retro from July 1st, 2022 uh, to June 30th, 2025. Um, and what you'll see is basically the uh, wages, um, were the primary negotiating point, and uh, in doing so, this union has two different categories of workers. We have a general worker, um, which includes the food service delivery, the uh, folks like that, and we have the other workers, such as the cafeteria managers, the truck drivers, et cetera. So our wages reflect uh, two different category, those two different categories. Um, we, uh, in year one, We've taken our part-time workers who are making $13 an hour and our full-time general workers who are making uh, $15.75 and we brought them all up to uh, $16.01, which reflects a 1.75% increase from the full-time workers. So knowing that the minimum wage increase would be happening and also to, re to become competitive um, as we're gonna be needing uh, many workers come the fall. Um, and then the folks from the other bucket, the managers, the truck drivers, et cetera, that was a general wage increase the fir this current year of 2%, and then the following two years of 2.25%. So the, the blended uh, increase over the three years is a 2.1% increase. Um, in addition, um, the insurance uh, contribution uh, and deductibles went up slightly. Um, the cost share uh, went, goes up a percent each year from 10% to 11 next year and 12% the following. Uh, the language in the contract remains relatively unchanged. The only thing were some clerical um, typos to, to clean up the language, but otherwise it's basically the same contract just with, with regards to the wage increase. Thank you. And so we know, having been just been through the budget, that this is essentially an enterprise fund. It, right. It, uh, self, it's funded by food sales students. Uh, right. And uh, it, we approved a budget that anticipated certain prices for certain meals and uh, the like. Is, is there any likely impact in the budget that we approved? No, I don't the believe there the will be, Mr. Okay. Barone. No, there should not be. The, okay. um, the, actually, the, the federal government gives us a, a range for our pricing as part of the program. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the council? And do you need a motion on this, or can we allow it to approve by virtue of time? I think it can approve by virtue of time. Any questions or comments from the public? There being none, thank you. Thank you for your time, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. 
to. You have a good evening. Okay, on to, uh, back to item six, which is to conduct a public hearing and consider an act on the ordinance entitled, an ordinance appropriating $1,757,851 for the planning, acquisition, and construction of various municipal capital improvements, 2023-2024, and authorizing the issue of $1,757,851 in bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. I hereby convene the public hearing for the $1,757,851 appropriation and bond authorization for the 2023-2024 capital improvement program. The ordinance, which is the subject of this public hearing, is available to the public and may be obtained at this meeting or from the town clerk. Is there a motion and a second to read the title of the proposed ordinance and to waive the reading of the remainder of the ordinance incorporating its full text into the minutes of this meeting? So moved. Moved by Councilor Laffin. Is second. there a second? Second. Seconded by Council, Councilor Allenson. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. An ordinance appropriating $1,757,851 for the planning, acquisition, and construction of various municipal capital improvements, 2023-2024, and authorizing the issue of $1,757,851 bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. Are there any comments from the public, all two of you? Actually, neither of you from the general public. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm safe to say there are no public comments, and I call the public hearing closed. Is there a motion and a second that the proposed ordinance appropriating $1,757,851 for the 2023-2024 capital improvement program and bond authorization be adopted? So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Laffin, seconded by Councillor Allenson. Any comments, discussion on the council? All right. There appears to be none. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councillor Allenson? Yes. Councillor Carmody? Yes. Councillor Laffin? Yes. Councillor Marone? Yes. Councillor Tata? Yes. Councillor Testa? Yes. Councillor Zandri? Yes. And Chairman Cervoni? Yes. The motion passes by all those present, unanimous. All right, well, that was the big one for tonight, right? Moving along to item eight. I move we approve an agreement concerning the decommissioning fund in escrow agent for MPH Al Pierce LLC. Second. Moved and seconded. Welcome, Mr. Hendershot. Please tell us what's going on here. I will defer to my attorney. <laughs> this matter. <laughs> wiser, wiser words have not been said. Attorney Farrell, you're going to need a microphone. Uh, the original lease between uh, CMEC and the town of Wallingford for the Pierce project required that a decommissioning fund be set up and uh, CMEC set up its own decommissioning fund. It was supposed to be agreed to by the town and uh, CMEC, and it was supposed to be jointly administered. It, it never was. When Hall Street, which is what I call the entity that really controls the present leasehold, what the lease from CMEC, it did pay to acquire the decommissioning fund. We worked over a period of time to see how it would be established. 
interestingly enough, uh, Hall Street came up with a, a firm that convinced me in, in a reasonable basis, not beyond reason, but in a re reasonable basis, that somebody would pay to come in and take the stuff away so that there'd be no cost. Nevertheless, we're establishing a decommissioning fund. It's going to be held in Connecticut in a bank that our escrow agent chooses. And I talked to attorney Norman Fishbein and asked, would he act as the escrow agent? And he agreed to do it. We traded several drafts back and forth. This is something both uh, <clears throat> the two entities plus the escrow agent could agree on after like 10 or 12 trades back and forth. I ask you to approve it. it. It sets up that the funds cannot be released unless both the lessee and the lessor agree and or court orders. It's a reasonable agreement. So I see the amount selected is $430,000. Um, what's the basis for the, how do we come up with that number? Well, Wallingford did a decommissioning study and came up with, I believe, $20 million. Uh, and then the lessee showed me that they commissioned a plant, and this firm in Rhode Island, which is a family firm, uh, paid to come in and take everything out. And evidently, uh, equipment that would have no value in Connecticut and you'd have to pay to get rid of it has considerable value in third world countries and this firm has figured out how to do that and successfully did that it's not a make-believe thing it took place already on one plant that uh, this entity bought so in, in other words the tenant is going to be able to resell the product and so I mean not the product the equipment so it's, it, we, we shouldn't be concerned that any of it is left behind. That's, that's correct. I mean, we, we could, uh, if, if somebody else became the purchaser, it gets left behind, the decommissioning fund would get transferred again. Okay. And, and we have reasonable confidence that, in fact, uh, reselling to a third world, world country is something that's going to happen and, and we shouldn't be concerned. It's happened with this uh, tenant already. When we get into the next thing, uh, the, the tenant bought like 37 uh, projects around the country. As best we can tell, it's Texas A&M and Texas University endowment money, probably Hunt family money. Uh, and they're making a bet that all this green energy isn't going to work, that the, the projects they bought, sooner or later the government's going to say, oh, God, please, please come online and come online a lot. So that's the bet. Uh, we, we, as a government entity, we don't make bets, but that's their bet. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the council? Councilor Testa. I'm sorry, I didn't have my questions totally prepared. I, I'm still trying to just figure out what's, what is going on and what we're being asked to approve. And I apologize for not being up to speed with that totally. Um, the, all the equipment in question, uh, does any of the equipment in question belong? We, we have the right as the landlord that at the end of the lease, whenever that occurs, that we can require the tenant to take the Pierce plant and turn it back to what it was before they became tenant. Mm -hmm. That's what the decommissioning fund is for, that they come in, take out what they put in, give us back the bare bones building that existed prior to their entering into the lease. With whatever was there. They take out whatever was there. They take, what, they take out what, what they, they brought in. in, leaving whatever was there. Okay, and that's what's it in discussion right now? Correct. Okay. And it, 
and you're suggesting, or you were, as you were explaining, um, they have a means of reselling their equipment. Uh, well, the company, well, they would resell it. They, they would grant to this family entity that they have discovered the right to come in and take out what is there. And this entity would actually pay the tenant for the privilege of removing what's there because they, can, they feel they can sell it at a profit. And that was really just an explanation as to why the financial terms of this, of this agreement seem so favorable when you would expect yeah, it not to. And it's, it's why that I didn't feel I could insist on $20 million as a decommissioning fund. Because that's what our experts said. It sounds weird. Well, yeah, no, I mean, would it, were they suggesting that we might be on the hook of any of that money? No. So, oh, no, no, no. So when you say you were thinking of suggesting that amount, that would have been because you anticipated there, there could be an extremely high cost to get rid of all this stuff. And now there, yeah, apparently there is Removing it and disposing of it, we anticipated yeah. it could be gigantically expensive. Right. Now, that, that doesn't mean that uh, if it were all there that the town could surprisingly decide it wants to get back into the generation business. So I don't see that happening, and that will get into the next, one of the next items of waiving the right of first refusal. Um, th thank you. And again, um, is there a possibility that um, we agree to what you are proposing and what eventually becomes negotiated and this white knight remedy that they have potentially have for removing all the equipment and so forth and so on falls apart? And are we then, have we negotiated ourselves out of uh, applying the kind of protective no, no, things, you, things you would have put in they're beforehand? They're still liable for the cost of okay. the decommissioning. Okay. We haven't waived that at all. Okay. So what are we really doing? We're following through on a contract item that existed, what is it, almost 20 years ago that was set up originally? Um, long time ago. 15 anyway. Yeah. And just, <clears throat> it was never acted upon by the town. Now we're acting upon it, uh, admittedly belatedly. Yeah. And, and I, and I apologize if I'm, you know, appearing thick on this, but I no. just, no, I, um, as you said, if, if it didn't work out the way they want it to work out, they're still liable. And so that would lead me to, to the question, well, you know, what are we agreeing to anyway? When, are we just giving them we're, their blessing? Go ahead. Well, we're, we're, we're really gaining joint administration of the decommissioning fund that's been in existence for over 10 years that they were solely administering. We found out they moved it from bank to bank as they felt okay. they never consulted us. We didn't be involved when they were selling the leasehold i'm looking at it and saying well where's the decommissioning fund so we said we want joint administration this is setting up the joint administration we should have had 10 years ago oh thank you i never doubt that the work you're both doing is in the best interest of the utility the town and it's always Extremely professional. I, my question, just so that I, I can understand uh -oh. them a little better, and I appreciate it. So thank you for indulging me. I'm glad you raised the questions. Thank, thank you. you. Any other questions from the council? Any questions from the public? There being none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilor Allenson? Yes. 
Councillor Carmody? Yes. Councillor Laffin? Yes. Councillor Marone? Yes. Councillor Tata? Yes. Councillor Testa? Yes. Councillor Zandri? Yes. And Chairman Cervoni? Yes. Motion passes. On to item nine. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve a bid waiver regarding the sale of renewable energy credits from the share of the Connecticut portion of preference hydroelectric, po hydroelectric power from the New York Power Authority of St. Lawrence and Niagara projects. Second. Moved and seconded. I'll start off on this. This is part of the government's green energy plan and we acquired some renewable energy, as we do every year, the hydro uh, power, and it came with energy credits that we can sell to entities that need the credits. Uh, by the time we were informed of the energy credits, there's a very short period of time, and uh, they are sellable, and we've identified some entities in Vermont that are interested in them and I believe it's a some expected to be north of 300,000 am I right an entire year's worth yes um, what the, the credits that are in the electric divisions what's called the GIS account the generation information system account at ISO New England is not a full year's worth yet. This, these credits started coming with this energy, it was associated with energy the, that was produced and the division took title to, <coughs> excuse me, last year, middle of the year, but we didn't learn of this new attribute with this energy um, until late in, late in the year. And then it took a while to work out the administrative details with CMEC to make sure that the credits followed like they should, ended up in our account as they should. So <clears throat> a, little, a little bit of extra background there. Thank you. Councilor Zandry. Uh, good evening. Yeah, ju I just want to make sure I understand what the the bid rate, the bid waiver request is. Is it just so that you don't have to go out and try to find the highest price for these for the selling portion or? It's to absolve us of the mechanism of somehow conducting some sort of auction for these credits. I wouldn't begin to know how to do that. Um, our wholesale power supply agent, Energy New England, is active in this world on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. They work with clients, municipal and other in New England that need these. And so they can provide the bridge between us who have these credits and other entities that need them. And it's not a terribly liquid market. There's not a lot of these folks out there that need them, but the estimated prices five dollars and fifty cents a credit and and these are from what i was reading these are just of use in the state of vermont is that what it is that's my understanding it could be that the that the legislation in massachusetts that requires the utilities including the municipal light plants to have renewable portfolios um, might accept these as well i'm not clear on that. This is all unplowed ground for us. And um, there, there could be entities outside of Vermont that, that can use these. So would it, would it be fair to say that this is an activity, this is the first time that we're engaging in this activity. And so you're trying to hit the ground running to do this. And obviously, I would expect that if you get more knowledge and more expertise at some point in the future. If you end up with more of these credits, you might look to exercise some additional activity as far as trying to get to sell them, obviously, right? Well, yes. And the need for these things will be what it will be. 
And I, I think over time, a, a more structured, more transparent, or maybe slightly more liquid market might evolve. And it might just be simpler to do going forward. But right now, I, I wouldn't begin to know how to do this other than break out a directory of utilities and start blindly calling entities in Vermont and say, hey, I got some wrecks in the trunk of my car. Do you, uh, do you want to buy some? Um, no, that makes sense. Thank, I, I just wanted to get a better understanding of why we wouldn't do an exercise to try to get more than the, than the fact that it matters. There's no, there's no groundwork yet to even try to attempt to do that. You're making something out of whole cloth, and I wouldn't begin to know how to accomplish it. No, that makes sense. I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the additional information. Thank you. Councillor Testa. Okay, thanks. I don't know why, but this sounds like crypto energy. Um, but you're not wrong. I'm not. Imp I'm not implying. I'm not implying anything surreptitious about it. It just it kind of amused me when I heard about it. I'm like, okay. But I'm going to overly simplify this because I need to. But I'm going to use it an example. So we we are in business somehow, doing business with um, New York Power Authority, Niagara, and all them. So as a part of that, or through Connecticut is working through that, somehow because of all of that business, um, they've distributed I gift can, cards. I can answer that. Yeah. I can explain what you're yeah, yeah. talking about quickly. Yeah. As a public power entity in a state that borders the state of New York, right. Connecticut municipal electric utilities are entitled to their, their share of a portion of this public, this hydro, this what's called preference hydropower because it's a New York Power Authority is a public power entity. And um, my best understanding is our share is based on the number of residential customers compared to the residential customers of the other um, municipal power entities that are eligible for this. And then Jerry mentioned CMEC earlier. They are what's the term of art is referred to as the bargaining agent for the state of Connecticut to administratively arrange for the receipt of this power. Mm -hmm. Power is not physically moved around. You can't tag it electrically. Right. But um, so every month they handle an administrative and financial settlement of all of Connecticut's energy from these from these projects, and and then we, in essence, we receive a check from CMEC, in and then use that money to buy at the market the power that was reflected by the hydropower that CMEC took title to as the bargaining agent. And all works out exactly the same to the penny as if we received it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But they handle that administrative function. So this has been going on for years and years and years. Suddenly, within the less than the past year, this hydro started showing up with renewable energy credits associated with it. You know, extra gold stars. We made the joke in the office of like S and H green stamps. Came. I was going to call them gift cards. Yeah, we came, came right. to the power. Through, through what they no are. effort of ours, it, it's yep. just there. And as we learned about that, we came to realize that to some others, it has these renewable energy credits have monetary value. And so why not? Sorry to interrupt, but not to you. Not to us. That was my, the main question I was going to ask, but not to you. No, Connecticut okay. has no, the municipal systems in Connecticut are not subject to any renewable portfolio standard. And so they, the, the, the credits do the electric division no good. If we were to abs keep them and retire them, all we get is the gold star of saying that this percent of our portfolio is now you know, green as green can be, yeah. administratively. Does so, maintaining that give you any benefit down the road? 
No, just well, just that credit, gold star. No, and the credits expire. Not to be facetious. They have a life expectancy. Yeah. These, the, the ones we're talking about now, at mid-June. So that, that's part of the bid waiver that we're under a short time in. It. Right. Yeah. So, again, this is all new ground for us. So that's, that's the situation. Perfect. Hope that was helpful. No, I appreciate that. And, and I'm right on board. Um, and and the only reason I asked. Say it out uh, loud, it, it yeah. sounds a little bit like crypto. Energy. The only well, I was kidding around with that, but the only you reason know, I asked those last couple of questions is just as a, a total background, a total safety valve. To is there any benefit to maintaining them? And like when you said, they they reflect like a gold star. And I'm sometimes when you are pursuing other projects or grants or whatever it is, they look for your involvement in renewable energy what it is and would selling these off remove that gold star it wouldn't be there for us to take credit for but they're going to evaporate right. in the middle of june anyway. okay so, so really not get some money for them got it rather than just let them expire so my understanding is they've issued these gift cards that we can't use but there are people that could use this gift card and there's a company that can help us broker them and sell them to people who might want to use them and it's not worth our effort to even try to do it on our own, even try to find another broker. This is someone who can sell those gift cards, and we can make some money we would not have had prior. So let's go ahead with this. Correct. Is that yes. legit? Yes. OK, thank I'll you very much. There. Thank you. As an aside, I can remember 39 years ago, Ray Smith and I went to Washington to lobby all of our congressional delegation to continue the preference clause in ongoing legislation. And we are now drinking with uh, Jimmy Gartland, our former congressman, who was chief administrative aide to Senator Thomas Dodd. And it, it has stayed. It's very beneficial to municipalities. All of the federal hydro energy projects have preference clauses. Any other questions from the council? Questions or comments from the public? There being none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilor Allenson? Yes. Councilor Carmody? Yes. Councilor Laffin? Yes. Councilor Marone? Yes. Councilor Tata? Yes. Councilor Testa? Yes. Councilor Zandri? Yes. And Chairman Cervoni? Yes. Motion passes. On to item 10. Please, please enlighten us. Yes, thank you. Uh, Just uh, for the benefit of the record, this is discussion and possible action regarding the town of Wallingford waiving its first right of refusal in the event that the Pierce plant lease is resold. Yes, the, the original lease between Wallingford and CMEC grants to the town of Wallingford the right of first refusal if the leasehold project is ever sold. Uh, we waived the right to be the buyer when Hall Street and its sub-entity purchased it. That did not mean that we waived it in perpetuity. If it was resold again, we would have the right of first refusal unless we waive it. Hall Street really wanted us to waive that right of first refusal and their argument was, we bought a lot of projects. The best way for us to market them in the future is to let a would-be purchaser pick them on entities or at least sell more than one entity at a time. They said that it's very difficult to negotiate with a would-be purchaser where anyone has a right of first refusal because the negotiations bogged down of, all right, well, this is our best offer, but what's the town of Wallingford going to do? Uh, previously, there was a commissioner who thought that at some point the town might want to get back into generation. Uh, I don't think any of the three present commissioners think we should. I don't think our director of utilities think we should. We've been out of the generation business for quite a while. Uh, I did 
Cal Hall Street that we would vote on this uh, at a time subsequent, the time subsequent is now. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't prefer, I don't expose whatever you do on it, but they've been a good tenant so far, am I right? Yeah, they always pay the bill. And uh, they do have a right under the original document to pull the plug on this project with 30 days notice and they're out of it. Uh, they pay over, over $350,000 a year in rent, am I right? I think that's right. It, it's a good, good deal for the town. It comes out to close to half a split between the electric division and the town of Wallingford. And uh, I think it's worthwhile keeping them as a happy tenant. Not that they'll become very unhappy if you don't pass it. Uh, way back when we were negotiating the amendment to the lease, town council granted to the PUC the right to negotiate the terms. You delegated it to them. Well, we did that. This is kind of a carryover on that. The PUC voted three to nothing at its last meeting to waive the right of first refusal, but the law department feels that your delegation really came to an end, and that's why we brought it back to you to say yes, because the waiver would go on more than 10 years, or could. Thank you. We're going to have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were ready to move. Not clear no. to me. Um, so am I oversimplifying it by saying, first, we're not interested in getting back in the business of generating electricity. And second, there's a benefit to our tenant because perhaps uh, it frees up the, the, the current encumbrance and perhaps makes it somewhat more marketable for them to move on from this experience? Yeah, and we want to keep it marketable because the last thing we want is that they, they want to get out of our Pierce project and they can't find a buyer and they give us notice. That would be the worst possible outcome. So they feel that having us waive the right of first refusal gives them an edge up if they decide to market. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. Um, the explanation of the worst possible outcome helps get me part of the way there. Do, if we give this up, do we retain or do we lose right of first refusal for the next? Oh, uh, this would be it forever. We never have it, anything it would to do be with this property forever. again. It would be out of the lease, yes. It'd be gone. So they would sell it, and that's it. it would, nothing would ever come before us, the PUC, ever again. That is just a property in town. Oh, but no. Uh, they, they would still, number one, we still own the property. Okay? okay. Number two, what they would be selling is the leasehold interest, which is to operate a, a, a peaking plant in the Pierce project, and they have to pay us rent. We're never waiving that. And, uh, you know, when CMEX sold, the people who were buying it did come to us and negotiate certain items. We're, we're not waiving any right to negotiate a second amendment to the lease. We, we can always do that. We can look to benefit our position at that point. Uh, while I'm looking, well, again, I, I'm not, espousing that you do it. I'm presenting it, what I, I think is for the good of the town. If you do it, good for Hall Street. If you don't, well, I wouldn't want to look back and say, man, we really should have done it because now we've got a 30 days notice. Will that happen? I don't know. But, and they, they haven't threatened that at all. They've been good tenants. Uh, one of the commissioners has looked into this entity and reported back that the word on the street and within the industry is that these people are quite smart and know what they're doing. They're not dummies. And you think it's possible, or you don't think it's possible that they're gonna ditch out and give 30 days notice? I don't think that's gonna happen. No. Any different and than them I, I think selling it, the leasehold? Yeah, you know, well. Isn't that the uh, same thing? Oh, no. A, a, no. In the end, I mean. Sell, selling the leasehold, the buyer has to keep paying us. Right, but that means they want out either way. 
So they're looking to get out. Well, it means maybe they, they decided they can make a pro profit. Of the, uh, they're in the business of. Yeah, I'm just concerned money. about the guy they sell it to, right? Or should I not be at all? I'm sorry. Should I should I not be concerned about the guy they sell it to for a profit? That's what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about these guys. I'm concerned about. Well, we we still have the right to look into, you know, whether the entity they're selling it to is credit worthy and stuff like that. So we'll still be able to approve all that stuff. Yeah. Hopefully they can transfer the lease without our approval. Right. You know, of, uh, we just are giving up the right to be the buyer. We're not giving up the right to approve the credit worthiness of the assignee. We still have the right to say, no, these people. You're Attorney Farrell, you're, the, the mic is you're, not you're, picking You're up. selling it to an entity that can't possibly pay the lease. We're not going to ever approve that. Oh, no, we, we still have the right to reject who they're selling it to. We're, we're just giving up the right to say, no, you've offered it to these people at $10 million. We're going to pick up that. We'll pay you the $10 million. We're the, we're the now owner of the project. That's all we're giving up. It's not, on, it's not kind of apples. I mean, it is apples and oranges. It's not just it's one hand versus the other. I mean, it gives them a little negotiating power, I guess, but... Couldn't we do that? I mean, by rejecting it, isn't that the same as, well, I guess well, then we're not obligated to buy it. Rejecting it would imply that we didn't like who they sold it to. Right. Not necessarily there's okay. anything about the sale itself. And quite frankly, it, it's, it, I, I don't know how low the price would need, want, need to be yeah. before we'd be interested in it. It's not getting any newer as it sits there. I don't either. It may be... Uh, the, the heat rate of the, of the unit is dreadful. It's not an energy machine. It's right. only a peaker, which means it has to be operated accordingly, which means now you need a staff of people to maintain it so it, it will start first time every time. Yeah, I guess I'm and just... And all of that administrative infrastructure, which we do not have. I guess I'm just... I'm being dim or dense about the us saying no, we don't want it. It's, it's just we're taking out a small step in the process. So, if I may, we're not saying no, we don't ever want it. We're we're giving up a competitive edge. We, if they're supposed to come to us and say, okay, before we go transfer the lease, you have the right to take it back, and and be the first, the first non-competitive bidder. Is it, no, is that I, I don't. I don't look at it that way at all. I look at it that they, they acquire a would-be buyer, and then we have the right to. No, I'm talking about the present situation. The present situation is they they want to get out of the business. They want to find somebody to take over the lease or the right. plant. Yes. Currently, we have the right to say it's us. And we have the right to say that first. But at the at the. At the right price. At the price they, right. they negotiated with this other buyer. Right. Yes. Okay. And so we're giving up that competitive edge. We're, by, by, by giving up this right of first refusal, we're giving up the right to go in there and say, we're going to match this buyer. We get it. We take it. And that doesn't stop us from if, if we've given up this right of first refusal in the event that they decide to go out and sell the lease. We still can compete. We we've just lost the right to say, "You're low bid. We're taking that." Correct. Yeah. See, I I look at it as like uh, a, a landlord has a lease with a tenant. The tenant has the right to assign that lease to an approved assignee. The landlord still has the right to approve or deny who you want to assign it to has nothing to do with the landlord thinking of it suddenly going to become not only the landlord, but the tenant as well. Uh, that's how the analogy I look at it. So. Sorry. It's fine. No, other people can go. Councilor Tata. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening. So when, um, how long since we've been using the plant to generate energy? I, think I believe it goes, it goes back. 
Oh, God, yeah, I, I came here in 2004. I think it was a few years before that was the last time it generated energy while Wallingford owned it. Okay. And how many tenants, do you know how many tenants we've had in place since? Two. Two. CMEC and now the entity to whom they've sold it. Okay. I, I, I'm a little bit leery to to give this away also. Um, I, I like retaining the option for us. I know you're saying right now we're not going to be in the business of generating energy. Um, well, and remember, too, it's to buy. I mean, we still, the town and Electric Vision still own the building and the mm -hmm. land. Yeah. It's just the stuff that's inside there. The stuff that's inside there gets less valuable and less useful by the day, the week, the month, the year. We also didn't put any of the stuff that's in there in there. We had cleared the building out and gutted it uh, before we leased. Attorney Farrell, the, the we mic's had not cleared the yet. building out and gutted it before we leased CMEX. So it's not like it was our our equipment that they leased. It was all their equipment. And for an example to show how the plant had lost value, they put in like $50 million worth of equipment, this is CMEC, and yet they sold the leasehold for $10 million. So it had lost that much value back then. Okay. Thank you. I, I do like, I think I'm supportive of retaining the option. I feel like we're kind of negotiating against ourselves based on hypotheticals at this point. And I don't know, 30, 20, 30 years down the road, Maybe we want to get back into it. I don't know. I, I, I don't see a huge benefit at this point um, of us giving this, uh, giving this advantage away. So I, I, think I'm, I think I'll be voting against it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Zandri. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I got a couple of comments I want to make out of context, and then I, I want to kind of circle back around. So just to Councilor Tata's point, um, 20, 30 years from now, if we ever want to get back into generation, we can. We still own the building. We own the property. We would just fill it up with generation equipment. Am I correct with that statement? If there's no lease there, we still own the building. We could get back into generation that way, correct? I suppose. It's, that's a heck of an open-ended technical question. I wouldn't want to be the guy who's responsible for making that plant be a generating station with whatever is the, the best version of, of burning something to make electricity in 20 or 30 years, because that's what it's for. It's too right. small I, for anything else. I just wanted to kind of address. Unless there's pocket fusion plants by then. Yeah. I can't imagine what it, what, um, what yeah. it would be. And, I, and that, that was the only reason I asked that question, because Councilor Tata is make, making her point, and it's, and it's a justified point to make. Well. If we do this, we won't have the op we might not have the option down the line to do that, but we actually would because we still own the building, the grounds, the substation, all of that. Correct. So this actually isn't a waiving of a first right of refusal. We're actually asking you're asking us to remove that. We're not we're not when I hear the term wave, it's like, hey, something's gonna be sold or rented or something. We have the first right. All right, well, I'll waive it. I don't want to do it. We're we're basically removing it so it's no longer a step they have to take. It could be tomorrow they want to sell the lease, a year from now they want to sell the lease, 15 years from now. So this is really kind of like removing that option, not really a waiver. Um, I understand the mechanics of that because what happens when you're in a negotiation with somebody that understands there's, there's a waiver in there, they're like, all right, well, we're going to do a lot of work, we're going to invest some time, money, negotiating, staff, and We'll do all the heavy lifting, and Wallingford could come in and go, no, no, we'll take it and not spend a dime. That, that erodes the ability for good faith efforts to, that are trying to be made. If you've got an entity that's got a remainder on a lease, and they, wanna, they want to sell that, some other entity might want to buy it and be a similar customer to the town in the way that Hull is now, and... Wallenford could just step in and go, great, now that you've done all our work for us, now we're going to take it at that price. And that, that makes it difficult for them 
to market it. Now, if they wanted to get out of it and that was a hamstring and they, they get to the point where they're like, look, we're not going to do this anymore and we're having a problem selling, they can give us a 30-day notice and they're out and then, out, we're, then we're not collecting a dime in that lease. Am I correct about that? Correct. All right. That's my concern. Right this very minute, if they try in good faith to market the lease to some other people that might be interested in it, and, and the albatross potentially is this right of first refusal and everybody walks away or they lowball it, then they might just say, you know what, we can't sell it. It's too much of a hassle to try to do it. We're going to abandon it 30 day notice and then we don't collect anything. Then we have to go out and try to find an entity that would be willing to come in, lease it the same way and, and all of that. I, I, it's, it's interest, it's an interesting scenario that, that we've got here. And, and, and like a lot of the explanations that have been coming up, these, these are the questions we get all the time. Oh, I hear the electric division is being sold. No, we're not selling the electric division. Oh, but we don't make, we know, what about all that power? We haven't produced power in 20 something years. Other people have down there, not us. And, and, and it's, it's, it's always an interesting conversation. Like even this tonight, they're going to say, oh, we waived our rights in the town. This is another step towards X. And that's why I'm glad some of this conversation is coming up because it gets it on the record. It gets to be stuff that we can go back to when all these rumors start up and I don't know where they get started up. So it's good that we own, we own the facility. We own the substation down there. We own all of that and we're leasing it right now. We've got a good tenant in there paying. And I, and I like the idea that if they wanted to sell the remainder of the lease to another entity that wanted to do the same type of work there, producing power in peaking times, that we would help them maybe establish the ability to do that rather than them stepping away saying, nope, we're not going to do it anymore and nobody's in here right now. The other, the other side of that is we're not, we're not giving up the building. We're not giving anything else up. So, I mean, the only, the only reason we want to keep this is if we thought we might get back into generation and we kind of would like to haggle with, with the, we're, we're using this as a leverage point to everybody else that's haggling the good deal. They work up the good deal and then we swoop in last minute and go, nah, we'll take that. You know, now that you've done all the work. I, I think that there is uh, an outline here that we're not, we're not, we haven't done generation in two decades. We're not looking to get back to it again. And the technologies in the future probably don't even align for having that facility there. There's, they're, they're not going to fit in that box anymore. And I think if this is a small little thing that we can do to kind of present it as something to say, look, you know, we're, we're happy with the tenant that's in there, the, the rent that we're collecting, our position by having the power first there. And this doesn't get in the way of them doing anything, then you know maybe we should look at it from that angle and support it. Um, that that's that's it for me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, your commission, the PUC, approved this. Am I correct? Correct. They did okay. three to nothing. Okay. And um, I don't want to talk this to death, but if we become concerned that we need to have a peak generation facility. Um, in our town, and this, we don't have a tenant. We, we can go in there and we can build a peak generation facility if, if we desire. Is, is that a fair statement? Sure, yes. We just have to spend the money for the current technology to do so, whatever that might be at the time that it happens. Right. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the council? Somebody prepared to make a motion or? Okay, I'm gonna move it. Um, I will move uh, that we waive the right of first refusal in the event that the Pierce plant lease is resold. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion on the motion? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilor Allenson? Yes. Councilor Carmody? Yes. Councilor Laffin? Yes. Councilor Marone? Yes. 
Councillor Tata? No. Councillor Testa? Yes. Councillor Zandri? Yes. And Chairman Zavoni? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, thank you very much for your time. There being no further business on the agenda, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none, I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you.